three and zero preseason. So that's the finale. Three and zero. Three and zero. By the end of the regular season, right? Right. Let's go. Let's go. Hey guys. Hey guys. Boom. Boom. Hey guys. We came here. We got another dub. We sure got the dub. W, hey guys, last preseason game, you know we about to come hard on week one. That's undefeated, preseason. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> With that win over the Lions, the preseason in the rearview mirror. The mantra is always to go 1-0, and and the Colts accomplished exactly that, going 3-0, and undefeated in the preseason for the first time in more than 20 years. And rising rookie Kylan Granson, one of the standouts of the preseason, was wired for sound in Detroit. How you doing? Good. Yep. Oh, we're getting booed. That's the <laughs> wow, real professional, guys. Real professional. We're just here to play football, and they say, boo? That's like booing an electrician when he comes to your house. You know what I mean? Like, man's just trying to do his job. Ooh, easy, quit. Get help. Get him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Is that a fumble or is that a pick? No, it doesn't matter. Yeah! Coach Frank said he wants that checked out right now. Oh, no, he didn't need to. He didn't need to. <laughs> I was trying to run. Man, my bad. Come on, we got it. Come on, we got it. We got it. Yes, oh! Okay, three, five. Yeah, yeah. Give it to him. Give it. Give it. Give it. Stay alive. Stay alive. And joining me now on Colts Camp Weekly, the final. Colts Camp Weekly before we begin the regular season. He is the always dynamic lightning in a bottle, Kenny Moore II. Kenny, appreciate your joining us. We have this week in between preseason and the regular season beginning. Although, of course, that 3-0 record from the preseason doesn't directly impact your goals in the regular season, what can you carry over from an energy standpoint, an excitement standpoint, into week one when we open things up against the Seattle Seahawks? Uh, I think for the most part for this team, we don't want to be too high or too low. We just want to come in just right for, for week one and into this tw 2021 season. But uh, we got a lot of cleaning up to do um, from the mistakes and miscues from the preseason. But it's good to go 3-0, and and we want to you know, carry that over in a season, like you said. How much did you treat this week cleaning things up, the things that you saw when you look back at the film from the preseason, but then also trying to get a jump start on that week one opener? I like this week a lot because you're able to get away from training camp, first of all, and then you're able to take a step back from training camp and just really dissect the plays instead of just doing installs and going out to practice and seeing what we could do um, and testing things out. But, um, you know, this week we just want to uh, take it slow in meetings, look at each play clearly, and then go out to walk through, go out to practice and really clean it up like we're supposed to. So it's no rush on anything right now. Uh, we just want to, you know, take it slow, like I said. And one of the advantages that you guys have as a defense as, is there is a lot of continuity, a lot of carryover from last year and what you guys did. I know one of the things that you mentioned and emphasis this offseason was you felt like guys needed to spend more time together outside of the building, outside of just being in practice, being in the meeting rooms together. Were you able to get some of that accomplished? How much did you guys, were you guys able to do outside the building? Yeah, we actually were able to hang out um, quite a few times this offseason. It wasn't as great as we we want it to be, you know, with protocols and, you know, guys been away here and there. Um, but we did get some things accomplished. And then coming back in the building, um, away from training camp, we were able to hang out as linebackers. I'm a part of the linebackers. ZP is a part of the linebackers, uh, the group, and uh, how we hang out off the field. So um, it's, it's not just a collective a position. It's, it's guys that, that genu genuinely like each other and, you know, just appreciate each other. So um, whenever we're on the field competing, um, we want to get better, but off the field, we want to, you know, dive into each other's lives. 
How much do you feed off of one another in those situations where you do get to spend time out of the building and maybe pick up on the things that you have in other position groups that they do well, you know, like the linebackers. That's that, you know, very high energy kind of ferocious linebacking contingent. And then you have Zach and the wide receivers, super high energy, big dynamic group that they have as well. We just want to come together um, as men, first of all. Um, it's, it's not always football with us. It's not always about, you know, what we can do on the field together as far as, you know, stopping the offense on third down or just winning um, as a team collectively. But we want to, you know, grow closer as men and, and just as brothers. Um, we just see ourselves being in each other's lives for, for so long. It's not, it's not just a uh, – I mean, for me personally, um, I don't see those guys in my life for just – you know, th this short span of just football. I want to see them, you know, for years to come from the transition away from football. So um, it's just something that I want to appreciate now um, as a ball player and as a human being. I know there are very high expectations for this team, for this group. What do you think fans should be most excited about when they pack themselves in to Lucas Oil Stadium for week one and then this entire regular season? Um, I feel like they missed out so much on a team that went 11 to five last year. So. Uh, I think from a player's perspective, I'm, I'm more so excited to see the fans. Um, I know they're, they're excited to see a Colts football team go win it and, and take advantage of every home game that we have here and adding another home game in Lucas Oil. But um, I just want the fans to know that, you know, the players are excited to see the fans. And, you know, whenever we have those not even key moments in the game, we want, we want Lucas Oil to be jumping at all times. Uh, this is not a place that we should be sitting down and, you know, enjoying drinks and just enjoying uh, the atmosphere and venue because we do have a, a very good venue in Lucas Oil, but we got we to gotta take advantage of the opportunity. And that opportunity is including the fans. And we want the fans to be right there with us each step of the way, uh, whether it's on the road or, or at home. We want to take advantage of each first down, second down, third down that the defense is on the field. We want you to be loud. We want, I mean, if, if we're going to have 11 guys on the field, we need the fans to be right there with us. So, um, I know that's a handful, but I, I don't know. It, it just really pumps me up when we start talking about the fans and like we got to get going uh, for home games. So um, whatever it is, the music, the fans screaming, I don't know. I like a rowdy place, so um, that's, how, that's how I like it. A special thanks to Kenny Moore the second for helping us wrap up this year's Colts Camp Weekly on our final edition. Now the attention turns to that climb in the regular season beginning on September the 12th against the Seattle Seahawks. And you can follow along on that journey on Colts.com and across the Colts social platforms.